afternoon and welcome to Nationwide on the network service of the Nigerian Television Authority, reaching you live from Abuja, Nigeria's capital city. My name is Ronke Kolawoli. More than 647 billion naira is the amount shared by the three tiers of government Wednesday after the Minister of Finance, Kemi Adiosho, reconvened the monthly Federation Account Allocation Committee meeting FARC, which was stimulated Tuesday. Details with Leah Katumba Batunde. Of the amount distributed, gross statutory revenue was 557.943 billion naira in value added tax, 89.447 billion naira. This, according to the Minister of Finance, Kemia Deoshin, shows an increase of 11 billion naira compared to what was distributed as revenue accrued for the month of January. Speaking after a reconvened meeting of the Federation's Accounts Allocation Committee, which ended in a deadlock Tuesday over non remittance of over 37 billion naira to the Federation account, the minister promised to resolve the discrepancies with the NNPC. And by that fact, there will be from time to time reconciliation issues. And I think that that's a normal part of the process. Um, accounting is never exact. Um, there has to be reconciliation uh, and there has to be dialogue. Um, there were issues that have been raised by the commissioners and indeed the governors on NNPC's account for this month. And NNPC has been able to explain some but not others. And so that process must be ongoing and is continuous. Some states are running faster than others. I will say yes to that. But uh, we all know that, uh, that uh, all right, we have to wake up, we have to uh, step up, uh, we have to tighten up our belts, you know, to generate what will be enough at least to pay salaries. The meeting had in attendance the Accountant General of the Federation, Mr. Ahmed Idris, Commissioners of Finance and Accountant Generals of the 36 states and representatives of the Nigerian National Petroleum Corporation, NNPC, Federal Inland Revenue Service, FIRS, Nigeria Customs Service, Department of Petroleum Resources, among others. In Abuja, I'm Leka Chimbaba today, NTA News. Meanwhile, the House of Representatives has debunked allegations that members of the House have been given $30,000 each to change the sequence of election. This followed a matter of breach of collective privileges of members raised by Representative Nuru Damburam from Kano State. Members described the said publication on a national daily as unfounded. Somebody just by mere publication on the newspaper of perhaps maybe pulse allegation to come out and say that we have received bribe in order to change the sequence of election. My honorable colleagues, I want you to support this matter so that this matter can be investigated thoroughly. I believe it's time and I want this house to seriously take a decision now on a class action suit on defamation. The only defense in a case like this, the only legal defense is truth. That is the only defense that can be put forward in a court of law, truth. You don't speculate on a matter that can be so damaging and injurious. So really is the ethics and privileges that will look into the complaint of the matter to determine whether his privilege has been breached or the privilege of the institution has been breached and what course of action is open to us. If there's no remedy from the ethics committee, let them de de determine that it is only through the courts that um, we can get a remedy and what kind of action for us to maintain in the courts. I think that should be the decision of the ethics committee. And uh, if they so advise us that um, it's only through the courts that uh, we'll get relief, then we'll proceed. The matter was referred to the House Committee on Ethics and Privileges. And still the National Assembly, the Senate has adopted a motion on the urgent need to include the Eastern Rail Lines in the Nigerian Railway Development Project of the federal government. National Assembly correspondent Dennis Adegunloye reports that this came up in a revisited motion brought by Senator Victor Ume, representing Anambra Central. Presently, 
the eastern rail lines are not in use and trains no longer ply these routes in moving people and goods in and out of the old eastern region leading to decline in economic activities. I read in the papers the president said the federal government would borrow some money for the development of the eastern rail line. If we try to develop the country in a manner that some people feel cheated or feel that they are not getting enough of the amenities, then that will continue to raise tension. It will continue to raise agitation. I want to assure you that the Eastern Rail project is a done deal need to address the recurring mass failure in the West African Examination Council why it examination results was moved by Senator representing Casino Central, Umaru Kofi. The Wayek failure raised continue to increase each year as evidence of failure of measures taken if any by education has been taken. People now assist their children to go and uh, do fake exams. How can that sort of child do well when there is no time for cheating. And that is where we are now. The situation in our secondary school system, particularly the government secondary school system, is so bad. And this is the result of what is happening there. One of the greatest issues we must address is, our, is increasing value of our human resources through education and health. The Petroleum Industry and Governors Bill 2018 was passed. And to other matters now, the All Progressive Congress APC decision to set up a technical committee, come up with legal and political solutions to grievances is part of the party's internal mechanism to resolve differences. Top APC stewards who explained this, why discussing matters arising from the NEC meeting held on Tuesday, where President Muhammadu Buhari contentious issue of tenure extension came up. Garba Muhammad Natala reports. The APC NEC meeting was a second leg of the same meeting held last month to decide on two outstanding issues, constitutional amendment, and to report on true federalism, the main decision taken at February meeting on tenure of Exco's again became the topic that dominated following the president's description of that decision as unconstitutional. APC stalwart say the party is handling the matter. The president uh, reminded uh, the party leaders that you know any decision, including that neck decision of February 27. Uh, should uh, align you know, itself with the provision of the of the constitution, uh, both of the party as well as the uh, the 1999 uh, constitution as uh, amended. APC National Publicity Secretary Bolaji Abdullahi says any resolution done at the meeting is in good faith. That is geared towards promotion of accountability, good governance, and the stability of the party. Best way it was a strategic move to minimize this rancor is to allow the incumbents to continue in acting capacity after June to enable, you know, that, to give the party the opportunity to avoid the rancor that will attend these congresses. Then after election, we can now call a proper elective congress to, 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 to allow people to now seek elective position uh, at the party levels across the country. Having decided on a number of governance issues despite the pressure, the party, they say, has re-strategized to prove its word and appeal to the party members to continue to support the leadership on activities of the party and the government. In Abuja, Garab Muhammad Natala, NTA News. And still talking politics, former Vice President Atikur Abubakar has formally announced his intention to run for the office of the President of Nigeria in 2019 to members of the PDP in River State. The former Vice President says he is offering himself to salvage the country and set home on the wheel of progress. Ogedi Inyekwere reports. Former Vice President Atiku Abubakar was in River State to consult with the PDP family on his decision to vie for the number one office in the land come 2019. He called for the unity of the country and offering himself for the mission to redeem Nigeria. 
I intend to offer myself to run in the office of the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. We will do everything we can to make sure that the party will come out with a candidate that has the kind of track record. On the entourage of the former vice president were the former governor of Ogun State, Otomba Benga Daniel, former Enugu State Governor, Dr. Okwesili Eze Umudu, former Attorney General of the Federation, Michael Andoka, and Senator Abdul Nenge, and Port Harcourt, Oge Dinyekwiri, NTA News. In the meantime, former INEC chairman Professor Atahiri Jaga has warned Nigerians against acts and conduct that may endanger the integrity of the 2019 general elections. He was speaking at the 2018 Founders' Day lecture of the Nigerian Institute of Advanced Legal Studies. Femi Okelwo was there. It is now less than a year to the 2019 general elections, and while so much has been done in terms of preparations, much more is still being expected, particularly in the area of execution of plans. Although there is still so much to be done on the field, lectures like this help to set the stage for the 2019 general elections. The Founders' Day Lecture of the Nigerian Institute of Advanced Legal Studies provided an opportunity for all concerned persons to make contributions towards enhancing the integrity of the 2019 general elections and examining the challenges and prospects, which was the topic of the lecture. Giving us a recipe for order and security in elections. There is no gainsay in the fact that election is a fundamental tenet of democracy and rule of law in any democracy. But the guest lecturer, Professor Atai Rujega, brought in a wider perspective to the topic, warning that the responsibility of ensuring integrity in the Nigerian general elections does not lie with INEC alone. What has been a major challenge for us in this country is that we have allowed our institutions to be very, very weak and to lack the capacity to protect and defend the integrity of the mandates that they are supposed to execute. And coming from someone who has seen it all, Nigerians will benefit from takeaways that he has been able to give in this lecture. In Abuja, Femi Okewu, NTA News. NIPOS seals off illegal career NIPOS companies to regularize postal services, services in the country. For details of this and other reports, as we hook up with Hingino in Lagos. Hello, Hingino, it's over to you. Hello, Hingino, it's over to you. Thank you, Ronke, and a warm welcome to Lagos. Lagos state government has assured residents that the joint task force set up by the state government to address their proper gridlock is already working to ensure free flow of traffic in the axis. The Commissioner of Police, Imohimi Edgar, gave the assurance during a press briefing on the two-day visit by President Muhammad Buhari to the state at the State House. Musa Osla reports. The Commissioner who addressed the briefing alongside heads of security and emergency agencies in the state said adequate preparations have been made to mitigate the impact of the road diversions on residents, while special access would be given to any emergency situation. The President and Commander-in-Chief of the Armed Forces is expected to commission the new Ikeja bus terminus. Is also expected to attend activities in honor of the APC leader, Ahmed Bola Tinubu. Is also expected to carry out a tour of Eco Atlantic City, amongst other engagements. On the Apapa gridlock, Edgar said the state government has commenced the construction of a new trailer park in Ijara Axis that can conveniently accommodate 2,800 trucks and tankers at a time. We would not want anyone to breach the security cordon where you are told by security agents that you cannot pass, go above or beyond this particular line. 
please cooperate with security agents. The areas expected to have traffic challenges during President Mohamedou Buhari's visit include Mobolaji Bank Anthony Way in Ikeja, Agege Motor Road, Victoria Island and Old Marina in Ikoi Axis. In Lagos, Nusa, Usula, NTA News. Ahead of the 2019 general elections, the National Human Rights Commission says those who perpetrate election violence and promote hate speeches should be held accountable. This is to serve as deterrent to others. Chairman, Human Rights Commission Public Inquiry Panel on Hate Speeches and Related Violence, Tony Ojuku, said this at the panel hearing at the Federal High Court in Lagos. Vera Chinoba reports that this sitting was for the southwest zone. Before now, people are hardly prosecuted for election violence and hate speeches. The panel is working to institute an enduring culture of violence-free elections in Nigeria. This is by ascertaining the truth and ensuring that those found wanting are brought to justice. We need to carry out this election in 2019 devoid of hate speeches and election violence, so that we can have a free and fair election. Inability to complete preliminary processes to enable the commission to proceed with a hearing was a major hindrance to the panel sitting. The part of the panel, uh, the panel will be seen to do justice to people and give them a fair opportunity. And that is exactly what we have done today, to give them the benefit of doubt. Some petitioners and respondents were absent at the sitting making it difficult for the panel to ensure fair hearing. For the Southwest Zone, majority of the complaints came from Ekiti State and against the governor, Ayo Fayoshi, the range from pre-election violence to attacks on APC members in the state. The governor also filed a complaint against APC in the state for the alleged murder of one Modukwe Temitwakwe. The former governor of Lagos State and Minister of Power of Works and Housing, Babatunde Fashala, also lodged a complaint against PDP and Ghani Adams for unlawful procession on the streets of Lagos. The respondents were not represented at the panel because of defective service. All cases have been adjourned to Abuja. In Lagos, Viera Chemoba, NTA News. In order to curb the activities of illegal courier operators across the country, the Nigerian Postal Service, NIPOST, has embarked on a monitoring exercise in Lagos. Diana Ajale, who compiled this report, says 22 courier companies were shut down during the raid. The illegal courier companies were raided for contravening the regulations governing the practice. Not less than 22 courier organizations were visited, while 17 were clamped down for unlawful operations. The general manager, Korea Regulatory Department, Nai Post, Dr. Ishaya Musa Diwa, revealed the desire of the Korea Regulatory Department to ensure that operations in the industry perform optimally. He therefore advised the public to desist from patronizing illegal courier operators. We had to go out to clamp down on those that we have seen uh, operating illegally. They've had, they've been able to bring a lot of um, challenges and problems to the legal ones. It is our responsibility and duty to make sure such practices are curtailed to the minimum and then to make it very difficult for those who are not supposed to be in the industry to continue to operate. Naipo says the raid on illegal courier companies will continue. That's it from Lagos. Over to you, Ronke. Thank you, Higino. Beneficiaries of the social security scheme of the federal government, popularly called Empower in Ikito State, say the program has changed their economic status. This was the trust of the one-year appraisal of the scheme in Ikito State, as reported by Samuel Johnson. The over 3,000 existing beneficiaries of the program and the 11,000 prospective beneficiaries expressed gratitude to President Muhammadu Buhari for engaging them meaningfully and empowering them economically. I'm very, very 
happy, as in to be one of the beneficiaries of Empowers. Mr. President, at the end of this program, we don't want to go back home. That Mr. President should kindly consider us. The State Director of the National Orientation Agency, NOA, said Empower program has empowered youth in Ikiti State as most beneficiaries are now employers of labor. Guest speaker at the event, Professor Kule Ajayi, suggested a special microfinance bank to provide loan and support to beneficiaries. Minister of Mines and Steel Development, Dr. Kawade Fayemi, pointed out that the seven strata of the program will be fortified for greater efficiency. This is the beginning, it's not the end. And it is not just the 30,000. It is what you have done with the 30,000. The Empire program has existed in Ekiti State for over one year. In Adekiti, Samuel Johnson, NTA News. Meanwhile, Nigerians have continued to commend the present government's political will to tackle insurgency, especially the release of the Dapchi school girls. This time from discussions on NTA Current Affairs Program Tuesday Live, re-echoing the Buhari administration's commitment to securing and providing conducive environment for development. Tanatu Ezerike has the rest of the story. The girl child Tomorrow's woman in this part of the globe is cherished and equipped especially with education to stand out. But the issue of abduction is becoming a challenge. These analysts say the present government is addressing it in its drive to cope insecurity. That is evident with the released Chibok school girls abducted in 2014 and that of Dapchi this year, released on negotiation that is globally accepted and practiced. Many Nigerians therefore see in bad light social media reports on a large game plan with the Dapchi school girls, which they believe is a political conspiracy. When Dapchi happened, some people were actually rejoicing, saying, well, under a certain administration, Chibok happened, now Dapchi has happened, it's 1-1. One -one. Doesn't make sense. It is regrettable and... Uh, Anybody that does that is somebody to fear. There is something going on in uh, respect of the balance of the Chippewa girls and the one single deputy girl that is important to us. While we are doing our operations using the kinetic measures, I'm aware that the federal government is also handling that other aspect and hopefully we'll be able to get these girls out. For others, there are lessons learned from the deputy school girls issue on fighting insurgency. Shouldn't we have a blueprint by now in the Northeast for doing things, not counter-terrorism now, but anti-terrorism? Our youth must make the environment, conquer the environment and make it friendly, such that if anybody comes to camp in any of the hills, the forests around, they will be detected easily. Definitely need to do a whole security sector reform, look at how technology can come in and be a force multiplier and see what we can do to make Nigeria safe. In the wake of the celebration of the release Dapchi girls came certain statements by otherwise prominent senior citizens believed full threatened national unity and dampened the morale of the military. If he went too far to bring such a calamitous statement to bear on the Nigerian army, particularly when we know that this very Nigerian army have been paying the supreme sacrifice. You know, the Nigerian army has over the years conducted operations in line with its constitutional rules and uh, also in aid to civil authority. These operations and exercises were duly authorized and um, it is done with absolute professionalism. It is generally agreed that Nigerians should imbibe right values, thinking, and actions for progress. Talat is a wiki, NTA News. And to some gender matters, free and compulsory education for women is key for Nigeria to achieve the much-needed national growth and development. This was part of the submission of the Executive Secretary, Nigeria Christian Programs Commission, NCPC, Reverend To Uja. When women intercessors for the church, also known as the Wailing Women Worldwide, and the Catholic Women Organization visited the commission preparatory to the women pilgrimage later in the year. 
Nigerian women have demonstrated fortitude and strength that they are the succor of almost everything we do in this country. And if there's any way you can still support the work of the women, we are ready to share your vision on the pilgrimage. Let me use this opportunity to appeal to you to use your good office to ensure the sponsorship of Catholic faithfuls who are widows and indigent members to this year's pilgrimage. Prayers were offered for Nigerian leaders and the led. You're still watching Nationwide on the network service of the NTA. More reports after the break. Stay with us. Hate speech is not a joke. It incites genocide and crimes against humanity. Most of Africa's civil wars are caused by hate speech from one tribe against another. We don't want it here. The Nigerian government stands firm against hate speech. Under no conditions whatsoever should we tolerate or excuse or justify hate speech or hateful conduct of any kind, especially where such is illegal. There's no doubt that the resurgent push for separatism as well as the rising cases of ethnic and religious disharmony are all traceable to the growing phenomenon of hate speech. One nation bound in freedom. Peace and unity. Nigeria, one nation, one people. This is a public service announcement brought to you by NTA. Now, you can hold that dream occasion without stress. Horizon Caterers will provide answers to all your kitchen questions. Exquisite hall designs, mouth-watering and nourishing local and continental cuisine. Suitable for all types of ceremonies, including weddings, AGMs, business luncheon, cocktails. Name it, we can bring it. Our chefs and executive waiters give your guests that unforgettable experience in service. Our service covers all states of the Federation. Call us today to book your locations. 0805-502-9637-0803-450-9726-0909-9708-111. Horizon Caterers. Experience catering beyond the horizon. At the end of 2017, the Buhari administration delivered a number of unprecedented achievements. Generated power has gone up to 7,000 megawatts in 2017 from 3,000 megawatts in May 2015. More than 1.6 trillion naira has been spent on infrastructure for roads, bridges, housing, dams and railways. Nigeria moved up 24 places on the World Bank's Ease of Doing Business rankings and earned a place on the list of top 10 reformers in the world. Today, 5.2 million primary school children in 28,249 schools in 19 states are receiving a free meal daily. Our custom service recorded its highest ever revenue collection of 1 trillion naira in a single year. Our foreign exchange reserves grew by $12 billion, reaching the highest level since 2014. We added $250 million to the Sovereign Wealth Fund and officially moved out of recession. You're still watching Nationwide on the NTA. Nigerian University takes up entrepreneurship courses to boost economic growth and development. Details of this and more with Nora in Sokoto Network Center. It's good to see you, Nora. Thank you and welcome to Sokoto. Sultan Muhammad Saad Abu Bakr, the Ford House, called for effective training of security personnel, especially on weapon handling to avoid killings of innocent people in the society. The monarch gave the advice when he received control of general of prison service in Sokoto. Show Muhammad Dati completes the report. The Comptroller General who was in Sokoto for Prison Welfare Scheme Workshop visited Sultan Palace soliciting for fatherly advice. 
insult and who frown at four weapon handling by some security personnel advocated for effective training on weapon handling. He decried the state of some prisons in the country and the need for urgent government intervention to address the problem. The Sultan acknowledged skills acquisition programs for inmates as a giant stride towards reforming prisoners to become useful members of the society. Comptroller General of Nigerian Prison Service, Jafar Ahmad, said staff welfare are the main government priority, hence the need for prison welfare scheme. This administration under President Muhammad Buhari has uh, really uh, focused its interest in the prison system to see that the prison has a humane and secure custody and also that the inmates are well taken care of in terms of their feeding, in terms of their medicaments and in terms of the environment and the cells. Secretary of Prison Welfare Insurance Scheme Muhammad Salisu and President Prisoners Wives Association Ajia Gomaja Paru assured of more programs aim at enhancing the welfare of prison personnel. In Sokoto, Shio Muhammad Deti, NTA News. In an effort to shift away from white-collar jobs, the Sokoto State University is to introduce entrepreneurship courses designed to prepare young graduates to be self-reliant after graduation. Chancellor of the University and Emir of Buse, Dr. No Muhammad Sanusi, announced this while receiving the university's accreditation report. Abraman Usman Jibrila reports. Dr. Amir Muhammad Sanusi commended the University Governing Council for their efforts towards the success of the accreditation process, which he said is aimed at making the institution a center of academic excellence. The Chancellor restated commitment of the university towards providing a functional educational system through staff development, community services, and other extracurricular activities. He said the introduction of the entrepreneurship development courses will prepare young graduates to be self-reliant after graduation. You give a person an education that will help him live a better life. The Chairman Governing Council, Inu Abdul Qadir, told the Chancellor that the state government has concluded plans to establish College of Health Sciences with a teaching hospital. Vice Chancellor of the University, Professor Saini Muhammad Nangogu, said out of the 23 courses accredited, 18 courses were granted full accreditation status, while the remaining five courses were given interim accreditation and expected to get full accreditation in the next two years. The Chancellor was conducted around some facilities constructed by the state government and TET fund intervention projects that include 1,500 seat capacity main library under construction, completed e-library with 111 seat capacity, among other projects. In Sokoto, Abraham Osmanjibrila, NTA News. The KBC government has adopted automation of internally generated revenue for local government areas in the state. The move aimed at establishing a reliable taxpayers' database for effective revenue projection and sustainable increase in revenue generation. The report. The system is expected to guarantee efficiency, transparency and accountability in the local government areas internally generated revenue collections. This is to be achieved through deployment of electronic revenue collection platforms for internally generated revenue at the local government level. The KBC said Commissioner for Agriculture, Alaj Muhammad Ugarba Dandiga, who supervises Ministry for Local Government and Chieftaincy Affairs, said the new concept is apt considering the ongoing struggle for economic independence by governments at all levels. And with what I have seen demonstrated today, it shows that any problem that is meant for the local government will not escape the, the managing director of Cascada Global Services Engineer Morir Ahmed said the new system is not targeted at reading local government causes of their responsibilities in revenue collection, but strengthening the system for better results. Other stakeholders who expressed their support to the new system said it will assist in addressing challenges associated with revenue collection and utilization. The meeting was organized for local government chairmen, deputy directors, other charges, and revenue officers of the 22 local government areas of Kabi State. That's our contribution from this and I'm back to Rinke and Abuja for more nationwide. Thank you, Nora. With the increasing rate of trafficking in persons and difficulties in reintegration, key players have converged on Calabar 
to put in place a protocol for identification, safe return, and rehabilitation of victims. Director General National Agency for the Prohibition of Trafficking in Persons, NAPTIP, Dame Julie Okadoni, says the protocol is to empower victims and make them functional members of the society. Umo Basiated has that report. The new dimension of human trafficking, as evident in the Libya case, has continued to be of concern to the federal government, with concerted efforts made at immediately evacuating citizens back home. However, returning to their country of origin is often a difficult process, as victims face psychological, health, legal, documentation, and financial problems, thereby finding it hard to reintegrate with families and communities. If you do not identify traffickers, you cannot assist them. You cannot, uh, you cannot bring them back. They cannot have a safe return because they are treated as criminals. So it's very important to identify traffickers so that they can be safely returned with dignity and they can be rehabilitated. Governor of Cross River State, Professor Ben Ayade, represented by the Attorney General and Commissioner for Justice, Mr. Joe Abang, said worried by the modern-day slavery, government has instituted various programs to curb the menace. The government factory, which is the, the first uh, port of call for this uh, government, has led to the employment of about 3,000 young people and women. Supported reintegration is a right owed to trafficked persons to prevent re-trafficking and grow a community of survivors who will contribute meaningfully to the development of the society. In Calabar, Umo, Basidate, NT News. From Calabar, we go to Ogun State, where the government has inaugurated its steering committee on public service reform to promote good governance and improve public service delivery. Governor Ibukunle Amosu urged the 15-member committee to operate in line with the vision of the state government, which is to take the public service to a world-class level. Lekon Abode has that report. The 15-member committee, which consists of top government functionaries, has mandate to work with relevant partners towards human capital development and fulfillment of government's mission to fast-track growth. Governor Amosun urged the committee to promote and pursue the aspirations of the present administration to establish a system-driven environment and make sure that civil service and public service are in tune with world best practices. The sum of the terms of reference is to ensure external donor programs in public service reform are aligned and consistent with government reforms policies, our plans and governments, our plans and systems, to review and approve public service reform initiatives. The state head of service, Abayomi Chobande, commended the governor for his passion and commitment to welfare of workers and capacity development. We are here today. The committee has been able to come to this stage. We are now have the public service as in office coming on board. The dawn. DFID and GIZ are all partnering government in the agenda. We look forward to continuing the partnership with you. We're committed to that and we will continue to provide the support we could do in following this part. So I want to thank you for the opportunity that you're starting to don't commission part of the process and for setting the pace. Governor Musun is the chairman of the committee, while a director in one of the ministries, Jola Oyeneye, is the director general. In Abeokuta, Lekon Agmonde, Hentia News. It is the tradition of the Federal Road Safety Corps to embark on sensitization during festive periods. With Easter celebration in sight, the FRSC has taken its ongoing nationwide sensitization to Guagualada area of the Federal Capital Territory, where commercial drivers were again reminded of basic safety tips. Kunle Adeyeye reports. Characteristically, there is an upsurge in vehicular movement when any festivity is approaching. Situation on the road then becomes chaotic if mechanism needed is not deployed. The Federal Road Safety Corps, the statutory agency responsible for traffic management, was at the Road Transport Employer Association of Nigeria's Park, Gwagwalada, a suburb of the FCT, to re-echo to road users, especially commercial drivers, on the need to practically obey traffic rules during Easter. 
representing the Corps Marshal Bobuyo Oyoyemi, Corps Public Education Officer Bisi Kazim highlighted the measures the Corps has put in place, which include high visibility of FRSA officials on roads, enforcement of speed limiting device, and prompt response to emergencies. This patrol is in three phases. We're going to start uh, one in the morning, uh, six to two. The other one, two to eight. And, but mind you, the one in the night is rest for rescue purposes. Chairman Eru Fai Park, Gwagwalada, Samuel Olariwaju said the awareness is a reminder to the basic road requirements, while Christian Uguche, a commercial driver, believes the periodic sensitization has not only changed the orientation of the drivers, but that of the passengers. What they have come to do today is a welcome development and is a very, it will go a long way to help drivers most especially those who are on highway and those who are running within the town. I said my driving will be very smooth based on what they taught us today. They said we should be very, very careful on the road, the way we drive cars, and we should not be over speeding. Beyond these safety tips, the FRSC is also putting up 200 mobile courts during this period to try traffic offenders. In Abuja, Kunle, Adeyeye, NTA News. Chinyere is standing by with more reports in Enugu. Take it away, Chinyere. We apologize. We have to break away from Enugu due to lack of audio signal. Moving on now, we go on commercial break. Experience, they say, is the best teacher. They hold us from the sea. Thank God that we came back home. They should not go. That is because it's not, no, it's not good. It's, it's a very bad place. So they, they just may have us. Even now, so if they are shooting the boat they are going to use to go to Italy. May they stop it. Our country is good. Our country is a blessed country. Now, now I know say I know our country is a blessed country. I didn't mean I know before I for not travel from Nigeria to Libya. I know how much I spent. Let these personal experiences serve as a lesson to all who would repeat their mistakes. A word is enough for the wise. This is a public service announcement brought to you by NTA. Health Squally is a responsibility of both federal, state and local government. And what we've done is to really sell this idea to the state government. Whatever we eat can help our organs can, to work well, can also harass our organs to fail. those hot teas that are brewed with spices. As a blood donor, I, I see one of the things that, that is something that you give hope to another person that is, is, is in need. Hello and welcome to Health Options. Registration is now open for state and sports clubs to participate with free accommodation and feeding for athletes and officials on the basis of first come first set at the first National Grassroots Sports Festival, Sports for All, to discover sport talent, develop future world champions and rejuvenate sports in Nigeria. Date 19 to 29th of April 2018, venue National Stadium Abuja, packaging a and B. This is an opportunity for state governors to mobilize supporters and fans for their state through broadcast sponsorship and for companies to promote their brand. For broadcast sponsorship, contact Angelo Peter I. Elosia, Chairman and Chief Coordinator, or Nick Onyisi, Organizers, Grassroots International Sports Academy and LOP Worldwide Television, endorsed by the Federal Ministry of Youth and Sports Development, broadcast by NTA, the largest television network in Africa. We 
with the audio challenge over, we'd like to rejoin Chinyere in Enugu for more reports. Thank you, Ronke, and for joining us. Three new High Court judges have been sworn in in Enugu State. Governor Ifanyu Gwani charged them to discharge their duties with diligence and according to the rule of law. Ijoma Ugweke has details. The judges are Joy Linda Chiama Okibe, Veronica Ajogu, and Esther Nenna Luku. The chief judge of Enugu State said the three new judges met the required standard of the National Judicial Council for appointment into the High Court of Enugu State. She noted that they have gathered lots of experience at the bench. Good character, reputation, consistent adherence to professional ethics. Governor Ifan Iguan, while congratulating the new judges, urged them to approach their duties with diligence and high sense of dignity. As need also to fill the new division, the new position of Kishan by Michael Division at our home, good local government area. I sincerely congratulate the new judges on their deserved appointment. And we're confident that having been found suitable for elevation to this revered office. Speaking on behalf of the new judges, Justice Joy Okibi thanked the governor for the honor and promised to discharge their duties creditably. With the vacuum created by the appointment of Joy Chiama Okibi, the former chief registrar, Mata Nkiru Aro Onwaha has been appointed as acting chief registrar of Enugu High Court in Enugu Ijomu Weke, NTA News. And as part of efforts to promote quick dispensation of justice in the state, Governor Ifan Ugwani has laid the foundation stone for the state customary court of appeal headquarters. Before Martin Dukoli reports. With 153 customary courts spread across the 17 local government areas of Enugu State to dispensing justice at the grassroots, the Enugu State government deemed the befitting headquarters for the judges and staff of the customary court of appeal to enhance justice delivery. Enugu State Governor Ifani Ugwani, while laying the foundation stone, expressed the belief that the project, when completed, will enhance quick dispensation of justice in the state. He commended the efforts of the customary court of appeal president in the actualization of the project. This, we believe, will not only help to enhance the dignity, efficiency, productivity, and safety of our court, but will also help to boost the confidence and comfort of all court users. The Enugu State Chief Judge Justice Priscilla Emehelo extolled the state government for its commitment to the affairs of the judiciary. The President of Customary Court of Appeal, Enugu State, Justice Judge Namane, commended the government for the actualization of their dream and promised they will continue to be dedicated to their duties. We are thus elated because the Customary Court of Appeal is only a fraction of the areas in the state of your caterpillars, cranes, and mixers are roaring. The customary courts, apart from creating jobs for the lawyers, also refine the content of the judgments from the justice sector. In Enugu, Ifama Ndu Okoye, NTA News. Abia State Governor Dr. Okeze Ibazo has described the leather sector as the nation's gold mine that holds the key to the industrial growth, economic diversification, jobs and wealth curation in Nigeria. Uche Chuku Onwe reports that Governor Iwazu stated this while receiving the Minister of Science and Technology, Dr. Obunaya Onu, at the second National Leather and Leather Products Policy Validation Session in Aba. The Governor of Abia State, Dr. Okeze Ipazu, who was represented by his deputy, said Nigerians' vision of becoming one of the 28 largest economies in the world by the year 2020 is only attainable when leather products through the required innovation and technology is fully integrated into our national socioeconomic development. <laughs> And 
the Minister of Science and Technology said the APC-led administration of President Muhammadu Buhari is determined to ensure that greater emphasis is placed on leather technology as an instrument for enduring development that is sustainable. I am High point of the validation workshop was the presentation of the draft national leather and leather products policy by Bello Abayekasi, which he said lack of quality hide and skin, poor infrastructure, absence of national standard are factors militating the growth of Nigerian leather industry in Aba. News. That does it from here. It's back to you, Ronke. Good afternoon. Good afternoon to you too, Chinyere. The federal government is set to make teaching hospitals across the country a world-class standard. Chairman of the newly inaugurated management board of the University of Ilori Teaching Hospital, Olorogun Ortega Emeho, disclosed this in Ilori, the Kwara State Capital. Aisha Abubakar Yahaya reports. The chairman of the management board of the University of Illinois Teaching Hospital, Olorogun Ortega Emeho, explained that the topmost priority of this present administration is to provide best medical facilities across the country that could compete with international standards. He said the federal government's aim is also to make Nigeria hospitals medical tourist attraction that would encourage foreigners to come rather than Nigerians going abroad for treatment. We are going to collate all our experiences as a board and ensure that we bring all this together to improve the fortune of this institution. Mr. Ortega said University of Illinois has, over the years, been able to serve Nigerians, and as such, the board would be able to build on the established standard. Aisha Abubakar Yahaya, NC News. Few days to the runoff presidential election in Sierra Leone, international observers have met with various donors to seek an improved way for a smooth, free, fair, and credible runoff elections. Abdul Malik Adio reports that the international observers allayed the fears of some of the donors who already have doubts about the runoff elections. And that the election will take place on the 31st. And so, um, Ranging from international to national, these donors have in no small measure contributed to the development of democracy in Sierra Leone, having gone through the civil war, to the Ebola crisis, and the mudslides that claimed millions of lives. These donors have come to their aid in different capacity just to ensure that the labor of many years does not fizzle out in vain. Four days ago, the biggest concern that we had, and we've all forgotten about it, was the tension between the police and the neck. Um, and it's very important that they see observing the tallying process and the counting process as important as the voting process. It's absolutely clear, I and mean, as you know, as others have said, that this was looking really quite, um, what's the word? I mean, it, difficult and potentially dangerous. We're, we're very grateful for all the efforts you've made and for the results you've achieved. The international observers expressed optimism that the runoff elections would be peaceful as all hands are on deck to ensure credible elections. It's here that whatever NEC needs to do its work well, all faces moving forward. The, the capacity, human as well as the material capacity, the communication strategy and, and, its, uh, uh, and its implementation all of these we need to support to ensure that what NEC says that it can do, it can in fact deliver on those things. Because we did not just talk with the political parties and the NEC, we tried to also reach out to some of the key stakeholders because for elections to be successful, the electoral body and the security are key. Uh, if these two ensure that the elections or the credit will be transparent, then of course to so be able to get there faster. As ourselves, we have already reached a consensus that we will work on those issues in order that everybody's confidence in the electoral process is enhanced. Saturday, the 31st of March, has been agreed by all stakeholders for the runoff elections to hold. 
in Freetown. Abdul Malik Adio, MTA News. And now to sports. Nigerian Volleyball Federation to open camp in Kaduna in preparation for international competitions with Nick Kairos failing to reach the semis of Miami Open. Amazon Marcus has more on sports update. Following the Super Eagles 2 new loss to Asabia on Tuesday in an international friendly played in London, Nigerians have called on the Football Federation to organize more friendly matches for the team in order to prepare them well for the 2018 FIFA World Cup in Russia. They added that the match against Serbia has helped reveal some of the loopholes of the team. The, the friendly games are just games to prepare us and to see where we are lacking and it's a game where the players too will realize that a lot of work has to be done in order for us to be successful at the World Cup. Upon the 